Hey guys, this is Brian over at R1 Soft, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps of installing the Server Backup Manager for the first time. I'm also going to walk you through the steps of getting a server added to the Backup Manager's web interface uh, to be backed up. So, two things that we're going to need in this tutorial: um, one is a server that you're going to install the Server Backup Manager on, as well as a server that you want to back up, and that needs to be either a Windows or a Linux uh, machine. So. Today in this tutorial, I am working with two Ubuntu Linux virtual machines. So I'm going to show you uh, how to get that um, that backup manager installed using apt. Um, so we also have yum details available, which I'll provide here here in just one second. So um, first thing that we need to do on the server backup manager is add the repo information uh, to apt. So if you go to br browse to repo.r1soft.com and you'll see right there at the top of this list is an app info HTML file just click on that and this is a line that you're going to need to add to your sources.list on that server and then you're going to need to walk through the steps of adding that gpg key and once you run an app get update and uh, you, you'll be able to see all the packages that we have available by just running apt search in r1soft um, if you were using an RPM based machine utilizing yum, go ahead and uh, go to the bottom. You're going to see yum info HTML here. And that's all you need to do is just add that to yum repos D. Uh, just create a file in there, r1soft.repo, and then just copy and paste this uh, into there. <clears throat> so the once you have that set up, uh, which I already do, um, I'm going to go ahead and open up my server here. I'm going to type in apt install and then it's going to be r1 soft cdp enterprise server so i'm going to go through that yes and all right so we're going to let that install and once that's installed we're going to have one more step before we move on to the web interface so let's go ahead and let that install All right, so now that that's installed, we need to go ahead and set up a username and password for the uh, manager. And how we're going to do that, we've got a little utility that we install with the server and the agent. It's an R1 soft setup utility. So if you type in R1 soft and setup, and let's go open up the help, you can see all of the commands that you can use here uh, with that utility. And we're going to be using the user in the past to set the username and password. So I'm going to type in R1Soft, uh, setup, and dash dash user. And I'll just use admin. And then pass. And I'm just going to type in R1Soft for the time being. If I can type today. There we go. All right. Enter. And you're just going to Etsy init D. And CDP server restarts. That's it. So now the backup manager sh should be running uh, or starting. And so you should be able to open that up and browse to the URL where you had that installed and uh, see that startup message. So we'll go there right now. All right. So I've opened my browser. I've gone to the web address where uh, for the server that I've installed the backup manager. And now we're just at the login prompt. So we're going to type in the username and password that you, you typed in. Uh, prior to this when setting it up on the server, so I'm going to go ahead and type that in. All right, so the first thing that you're going to see here is the license agreement, uh, which you probably browse through. Go ahead and accept, and then you're going to get the license activation. So if you're, you're just installing this as a trial uh, for the first time, go ahead and use that 14-day trial license. And if you purchased, uh, you can go ahead and activate your license key here. So I'm just going to use a 14-day license trial during this tutorial. Go ahead and click on Activate License. And now we're ready to go. So now we're at the dashboard, uh, which usually if you've got servers being backed up here, you're going to see a lot more information about um, you know the system information and such but right now there's nothing on here except that big blue button that says add a protected machine that's where we're going to click to go ahead and add our first server so let's go ahead and click on that now now we're on the new machine page we're going to go ahead and provide some details for the server that we're going to back up so up here at the top we're just going to give it a simple name any name will do i'm just going to type in linux server 
and then we we'll need a unique host name or IP address so uh, just make sure you go ahead and get that in there now the port number that's uh, 1167 by default that's where our service is listening uh, for requests for the backups um, so that does not need to be changed unless there was some specific reason that you had to change it on the agent side so um, go ahead and leave that as is now um, in this next section for backup location this is where we're going to store the backups now we're going to hit create a volume for the server that we're going to be backing up and what a, a volume is is simply a directory uh, where we're going to store the, the backup data in a disk safe on the server. So uh, volumes uh, can be created, uh, like say, let's say if you're a service provider, um, hosting provider, you've got customers that you're backing up their data. You want to create a volume per customer um, because you're going to, they're potentially going to have more than one server that they, they want to back up. And this is going to make it easily identifiable on the disk. Uh, and uh, so in just in case you need to move those somewhere manually for whatever reason you can find them so I'm going to create a volume here for the server and I'm going to just give it a simple name so let's go ahead and say Linux server and I've got a path created called backup and let's go ahead and say Linux server again now next section is going to be backup schedule and that is where we're scheduling how often we want to back up and the number of backups that we want to keep so I've got hours hourly selected here by default um, that's what we recommend uh, you can go down to minutely if you want to um, you can also go all the way up to yearly if you need to um, but I'd go ahead and recommend hourly uh, reason we recommend hourly is just the way that we do backups it's really efficient to do it that way so um, the way that it works is we will take one full snapshot of a disk for life and after that the um, backups are going to be incremental block changes only. In between all of your backups we are doing what we call change block tracking and uh, so that's going to make it uh, so by the time we take that back, next backup we already know it's changed. We simply snapshot those changes we compress them and then we send them back over to the manager to store in what we call a disk safe so those disk safes of course are uh, located inside of the volumes um, the local retention down here is the number of backups that we're going to keep so by default we have some hourly 12 hourly 7 daily 4 weekly 12 monthly and 1 yearly here so um, we if you, this is too much for you or if you need more than that feel free to change these to whatever you need so if you don't need yearlies and you only need six monthly go ahead and change that there um, now the next section it's going to be compression uh, we enable compression by default the default compression library that we're using is quick LZ um, very fast very efficient works well for for most people but if it's not enough for you if you need a little bit more or squeeze as much as you can out of that, you can go ahead and select Zlib and select a low, medium, or high setting. So uh, I'm just going to leave that as is. works well. So um, there you go. Um, now the encryption. Uh, this is where we are going to optionally encrypt the data at rest on the disk. So uh, this is also going to require that anytime you want to come in, access the backups. Um, and download and restore files you're going to have to type in whatever passphrase that you type in here so make sure you keep that somewhere safe and in a password manager um, because you're gonna need that so I'm gonna go ahead and enable encryption for this I've typed in a username or a, a password here um, it's going to need both upper lowercase characters as well as the special character as well um, to, to keep that uh, as secure as possible so uh, the agent software section down here at the bottom is where we're going to uh, install, optionally install the agent software for you. Um, just a few things to note. Uh, Windows is going to require a reboot, so plan accordingly before you uh, get this started. And um, then if you've got Windows 2003, that's going to be a manual install. So if it's Linux, we can load the uh, driver in there at any point in time we don't have to wait till boot time like we would on windows so you can leave that unchecked and as uh, since i'm working with an ubuntu linux machine i'm going to leave that unchecked here so we're going to go ahead and type in a username and password for the server 
uh, where it's going to launch the installation. And password. And that's it. So from here, you should be able to just go ahead and submit that and save it. And it's going to start the installation. So now we're back at the dashboard. We've got a little bit more than we had before. As you can see over here at the right side, we are installing the agent as we speak. So we're going to go ahead and let that finish, but a little bit more about the dashboard here. Um, you've got a lot of more detail here. So you've got some uh, statistics about disk usage. You've got disk performance. Uh, so if you've got backups running here, you're going to see a little bit more information here. Um, the local backup and restore performance, CPU and memory. Uh, information as well as uh, license information. So it's the number of days we have left in our trial key. If you've got a regular key here, it'll have some more um, detail about your license that you have installed. So once that agent installation is completed and we have a backup, um, we'll walk through and take a look at how you access those backups and, and what, as well as restore and download files. Now that we've completed the backup, we can go ahead and take a look at uh, how to access those backups. So if we want to go over to protected machines, we want to select the server that we've just backed up. I'm going to go over to the actions uh, menu here, select the drop down and go to open recovery points. And there you go. So this is a, this would be a list of all of the different backups that you have available here. Um, so this is the backup that I just took. Go ahead and select browse and I would have to enter that passphrase that I provided for the encryption. Go ahead and put that in there and remember that till we log out. All right. So as you can see, it's got a listing of everything in the file system here. Now, if we want to drill down into any of these, directories. Let's say I want to uh, download it, the info from the R1 soft user. I can simply select that, check the box. I can download selected here at the top. I select the file type. We're going to tar that data up or zip it, whichever you want. So uh, just select the, uh, which one, whichever one you want here. Um, you can create a file name if you want to. Otherwise, we're just going to generate one for you. And that's it. You click on download. We're going to uh, tar or zip that data up, download it to your directory for you. Uh, you can also restore it directly back over to that server or any other server that you're backing up here on the manager. So if you're going to, you know, by default, you're going to have the server that you're working with here selected in the agent field. Um, we're going to restore it to the original location, overwrite the existing files, which would essentially uh, roll it back to an earlier version. Uh, or we can specify an alternate path on the disk. So if you just want to type in, you know, temp directory or whatever, uh, you can specify that there. After that, you click on restore, and that's it. You've uh, you've you've restored those files. We'll start the restore process and get those uh, files restored back over to that path uh, for you. And that's it. So once you've uh, got that down, uh, you're ready to move forward. Thanks for watching.